I thought I'd do a really quick review of something that I did in September of 2018. I put this up on, on this channel uh, and it was a little bit long and I'm going to do it in a nutshell as an introduction. So it happens to be today is the 26th of April 2020 so it's two years later. As always, I'd like to say welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I love your comments. I have a lot of different content on here. A lot of people make really intelligent comments. And as always, I say, be the change you wish to be in the world, like Gandhi. Now, this uh, I'm not going to read any of this off. I'm just going to go ahead and discuss uh, the fact that... Here, let me pull this up a little... Meditation is, is an ancient practice like prayer. It's similar to visualization, except for meditation, in this instance, is allowing your uh, brain and mind to get into the zone. And um, religions use, uh, there's different forms of prayer, and it's, it's, a, it's a bridge between the secular and the sacred, okay? Between uh, everyday vernacular and uh, the higher realms and ways of being and doing. You are a spirit in a body. Um, your body is like a house and eventually you're, you're going to go back to, uh, you know, it's going to wear out. So um, I know that sounds kind of, but anyway, let's just talk about meditation. So now, the mindfulness meditation that uh, John Kabat-Zinn talks about is discussed more in depth in the other video. This is a brief synopsis, but a lot of the meditative practices were uh, uh, cataloged by monks and practiced, and they did kind of work, and they were in the context of a religious praying for souls, they had uh, exemplary persons, otherwise, uh, that might translate in Western uh, theology to saints, okay? So there were people that led exemplary lives. It is, a, a, over in China, it's an Aryan idea, and uh, it began uh, back then. More details in the other video. This is just a quick synopsis. There's also many branches of Buddhism. But um, they basically believed in salvation, eternal life, uh, karma, reincarnation, and death. And um, they would pray in their meditation. The monks were paid to pray for everyday people, just like priests are sometimes given a little money uh, to do put somebody on a prayer roll in some of the religions that are more... Um, where they have people that just dedicate their entire lives to prayer and not just uh, they don't get married or anything like that, but they have it as a vocation. So um, this is just a graphic and uh, it is uh, the the um, citation is at the bottom. There's also at the end you will have citation. Okay, so this is the mindfulness meditation was brought forward by um, John Kabat-Zinn and he developed a system which he I guess patented or copyrighted and there's another system called the Transcendental Meditation which is also like copyrighted and patented and um, basically they're just taking an old method right and they're studying this old method to bring your mind to an to a higher level but honestly anybody can do this and it doesn't have to be that way but so basically some of the seven directives in the mindfulness meditation I have a, a book from the 1990s I believe uh, and this is what I I referenced I do not have the newer version of the book and I do understand that he's added some new things on but he says when you're when you're doing the meditation there's some things that you should focus on 
and this will help you develop. But in the beginning, it's a beginner's mind, patience, trust, non-judgment, non-striving, acceptance, letting go. Well, a lot of this stuff is in the scriptures, and various religions have it where you, where you let God, uh, let go and let God. Um, you accept people the way they are. Everybody's diverse. Um, you forgive people. Uh, you have gratitude. You don't judge them. Don't you know? So anyway, basically, when you're doing your meditation, you want to have pure thoughts. That's basically what it is. So um, they have a lot of meditation. Meditation. A lot of the origins were traced back to India, and um, the the culture over there has been through a lot of different rule. Colonialism came there from uh, the UK. I guess it was England back then, and but the people have persevered and they've endured, and they even had Mahatma Gandhi, which was a lawyer, get in there and. Uh, with their minds, with their intention, they overthrew the colonialism in a pacifist, peaceful way. And uh, they practiced, a lot of them practiced this, not, not all of them practiced this, but people that can afford the luxury of practicing this did. But it's a type of meditation. This is a gr group yoga meditation. So here's John Kabat-Zinn. Uh, all the citations are below. I uh, did a research paper on this a couple of years back, and basically I, I wanted hard evidence because I was a skeptic. I did not believe in this. I thought it was pseudoscience. Uh, I looked at what uh, Dr. Uh, Zinn did, and he's very well connected. His, um, his wife uh, married a very famous sociologist, uh, Dr. Zinn, and who was a prolific author, so he he's well connected. He worked in this uh, Massachusetts um, hospital setting, clinical setting. Did uh, brain scans. Now these aren't his particular neural imaging scans. These are auxiliary studies. But basically, what they did is they discovered. I, I looked at multiple studies. These are the studies I looked at uh, that have nice graphics that I thought I'd share with you. Uh, just a snippet, but indeed the brain does change the different layers of brain after six weeks of mindfulness meditation. Um, this other one here also shows uh, different. They use CAT scans. They used statistics. Uh, they used a lot of math, a lot of graphics. They compared a control group, etc., etc. So basically, it does show that if you continue this practice, like working out and exercising your body, you can do the same thing for your brain. It'll teach you to have. Uh, it will actually. It helps strengthen up your your spirit and your brain. Um, and it al also helps you to be more sages, uh, have more uh, wisdom because it, it adds more flow into different parts of the brain that weren't getting as much flow before. And some people with like anxiety, depression, they study different people with uh, health problems like chronic pain. They looked in their brains. Now, I don't know if this was the particular study because I'm doing a quick review, but I looked at multiple studies. As a matter of fact, um, I will show you all, uh, some of the studies I looked at. Okay, these are all the studies I looked at. Um, and I've looked at more besides this in other research papers. This is just a quick snippet. And uh, I, so I would say if you start to practice mindfulness meditation or another type of meditation where you spend about 20 minutes a day, and it's sort of like a, a tool for improving flow in your brain, but it's a semi-conscious, it's a conscious thing. It's not a, It's not like you're sleeping it's more controlled. It's like, okay, you move around throughout your day and you're doing exercise uh, without even thinking about it. But then sometimes you'll go do exercises where you weight training or you're jogging and you'll build up certain areas. Well, this is the same thing with the brain. If you practice guided meditations, there's different types, um, you can uh, improve your mind and your spirit.
And so uh, I just want to thank you for stopping by and, and watching. And I intend to do some more videos of guided meditation for you. Uh, if I do monetize it, I have nothing to do with the ads. If the ads have things on it that uh, I'm not endorsing any of these ads, okay? Let's just put it that way. Again, thank you for stopping by. Take care and um, have a great day. Bye.